Look, I've well and truly seen enough in just the two games. Now, I've said it before, I'm not a huge college basketball watcher. I watched a bit of Cade, but I didn't watch a ton. So Summer League was something that I was curious to watch to see just how good Cade Cunningham was. <laughs> oh my God. He's, he's amazing. He's amazing. And I actually love the fact that he hasn't put up unbelievable numbers because it just means that all these people that are going to come out with these reactionary takes and say he's the second coming of Luka Doncic, he's this and that. They're not there because these people are just looking at the box score and saying, oh, he's only scored 20 points. Oh, he scored it on 45% from the field. Oh, he only had two assists. Watch the games. Watch the games. Game one, he wasn't amazing. Now, let's not be ridiculous here. He wasn't amazing, but he was good. He looked in control. He was running the offense. He was in tempo. He played off the ball. He just tried to work his way into things. And then game two, I mean, he was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I don't care about the numbers. 20 points, four rebounds, two assists or something. Three steals, a block. Clamped up Jalen Brown. Jalen Green, should I say, on four different possessions. And this isn't me coming on here with the Jalen Green versus Cade Cunningham debate. I'm not here to do that. I don't really care about that right now. But all I'm saying is that's an elite offensive player and at least an elite offensive player in the terms of summer league standing. Cade Cunningham clamped him up on four possessions. I'm pretty sure he scored only seven of his 25 points when Cade was on the floor. So we're already seeing Cade is going to be a good defender, potentially a really good one from day one. I mean, his anticipation, his one-on-one -on -one defense, everything he does, I've seen him off the ball. I mean, <laughs> he's so good. He's so good. Everything he's done has been fantastic. He looks good as a shooter. He's fluid in transition. I mean, what else do I need to say? He's posting up smaller guards. This is Cade Cunningham. I'm sure you already know this, but I'm just coming on here to say that because he's now on our basketball team and he's doing things that, I mean, you just can't be any happier with what you've seen. I haven't seen anything from anyone else to suggest he was the wrong pick at number one. Everything I've seen suggests he is that guy. Leadership, defense, playmaking, scoring, shooting. He would have had 10 assists. Let's say eight assists. That's being generous. That's being generous. He would have had eight assists if it wasn't for Littleson and Savitas being his two kickout options. He found Savitas on four open threes, Littleson on one, a couple of other open threes as well, and then also a couple of open layups that should have been made or were dropped and then turned into fouls. Cade could have easily had eight to nine assists this game. Same as last game. I mean, he's been diming it up. He's been taking advantage of mismatches. He's been hitting threes in transition off the dribble, off the catch, coming off screens, moving off the ball defensively, putting the clamps on Jalen Green, the number two pick on multiple different possessions. He said, look, you've been talking that stuff, Jalen Green, but I'm just going to clamp you up on multiple different possessions. Yeah, I can't help it if we lose because I'm playing with Savitas, Tyler Cook, and these guys, which... Go get, go, get, go get a team somewhere else. I'm fine with you guys getting a contract somewhere else, but not on the Pistons. Not on the Pistons, I'm afraid, because those guys aren't quite that good. But what am I actually trying to say in this video? Well, I just wanted to come on here and talk about the Summer League. So Cade Cunningham, he's the truth. He's amazing. He's unbelievable. He is rightfully the number one pick. If you watched that game and didn't see anything other than star status, then I don't know what to tell you. You weren't watching. You just looked at the box score because he did everything well. Sure, he could cut down on a few of the lazy turnovers, that's probably about it. And also, let me just talk about him controlling the ball because I've seen this a lot from Mike Schmitz talked about it. I've seen just people in general, Pistons, Instagram comments and all these things talking about, hey, he needs to have the ball in his hands all the time. You're wasting him. It's Summer League. It is Summer League. You know what Summer League is for? It is for people like Saban Lee. It is for people like Killian Hayes who only played 25 games last year. It is for those guys to control the ball and get opportunity. Cade Cunningham is going to be the number one guy on the Pistons for 15 years if all goes to plan. He's going to get reps. I know you want him to get reps immediately, but he's going to get reps during the regular season against better op opposition with better teammates in more lifelike scenarios. Like we see from what we've seen with Cade, he is that guy. He doesn't need all the reps in the world. Sure, would it be cool to see him dominate the possessions in Summer League and put up 30 and 10 because he easily could do that. And he probably would have done that if it wasn't for Savitas and Littleson and Cook's Butterfingers and all those things. But he didn't do it. But he would have been able to do that. But we already know that. Like, we're getting reps into Killian Hayes, we're getting reps into Saban Lee. Now, the three-guard lineups, kind of a different story. I guess we're kind of handicapped at this point because who else do we really have to play? Littleson? <laughs> Littleson? <laughs> Savitas? We don't really have any other options. So that's kind of why the three-guard lineups have come out. I don't think that's an ideal scenario for Cade to be playing at the three and being playing off the ball as much. Trust me, in the regular season, if Cade continues to play off the ball as much as he has, then I'll start to have question marks. Then I'll start to be like, okay, give him the ball more. 
But while while it's Summer League, and while the purpose of Summer League is to give reps to people who don't usually get as many reps, I'm not going to complain. Does that make sense? At least, I thought I'd just clear that up. I thought I'd just clear that up. Let's talk about some other guys. Also, Pistons fans, you know the deal. Drop a like on the video if you like it. That would be cool. But just getting back on topic, let's talk about Killian Hayes' backcourt teammate because Hayes hasn't quite been as good as Cunningham. But also with Hayes, it's just an interesting one. He's one of the guys that he's great defensively. He's shown great passing. He's shown great playmaking. His shooting sucks. <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat it anymore. His shooting is, it looks bad. It looks bad. Sucks might be a rough word, but you get the point. Like, he does not look confident shooting the three ball. That's what it comes down to. He does not look confident. He looks kind of um, frightened is the word. I don't know if that's the right word, but whenever he gets a three-point shot, it seems like he doesn't anticipate the defense being that athletic, being that long, being that good, like, in his face. If you know what I'm saying, that kind of sounds weird the way I worded it. But basically, he gets the three-point shot, and it just kind of looks like he's a bit startled by the defense getting right up in his face. He normally shoots it short or even really long. So he just doesn't have that right now. He doesn't create enough separation. He needs to get better as an off-the-ball shooter because he really can't shoot off the ball. He can't shoot off movement. I haven't seen him shoot off movement apart from a couple of step-back threes, and that's about it. So he needs to get better at that because realistically, he's not that good in every other aspect of the game where he can get away with not being able to shoot. But also, let's take some of the positives. He's only played 25 games. I'm not giving up on him. If you thought that was giving up on him, no, that's just constructive criticism because you can't just <laughs> coddle him the whole time. I've been someone who's a big believer. I thought his shooting would be better at this stage. I am a little bit concerned about that, but I'm not concerned about him being possibly the best second-year guard defender. I know that's interesting criteria, but he's an elite defender for someone his age. Cade talked about it. We've seen it. He clamps up. He clamps up Jalen Green as well. Off the ball, he's great. Those two are just going to be unbelievable defensively. Unbelievable. Like, it's ridiculous how good those guys could be defensively. And he's passing. He shows flashes of just vision that no one else has. Cade, an unbelievable passer, but Cade is more of a kind of traditional guy where he runs the pick and roll, makes good reads, but Killian has that special vision where you can see him just make passes that no one sees. He does that. He makes passes that no one sees, but those passes, the playmaking isn't going to be as effective if he's not a threat as a shooter or as a scorer because teams can just expect the pass and it's just not as effective. You know that. You know for a fact. If he can't shoot, if he can't get to the rim, he's not going to be as effective as a pass. But I'm not giving up on Killian. Just some constructive criticism. He needs to improve his shooting. We know that. But to say he's been terrible or he's a bust... It's been 25 games. He's got one clear aspect of his game that he needs to fix. Also, he needs to fix going to the right side of the floor instead of going left every single possession. That would help as well. But defensively, he's been great. His passing shows signs of just, he's an unbelievable passer. Let's not put it two ways. He's an unbelievable passer, but he does need to clean up a couple of other aspects of his game. If he can do that, well, then we've got a star in the backcourt with Cade. I do believe that even if he doesn't get to the point where he's a good shooter, he's just an average shooter, then we've got a good player at the very least. Then looking at some other guys, who else? Sadiq Bey. Sadiq Bey's just looked like someone who's better than most of his competition alongside Cade, except we've seen this before from Sadiq Bey. Now we're just seeing it against guys that clearly aren't up to his level. So it's really not that surprise. He's shown off some shot creation. I'm excited to see what Sadiq Bey does this season. I don't really need to talk about him too much. We kind of know what he is. He's a dead eye from beyond the arc. He's shown off some shot creation inside. He made a couple of decent like passes this game, which was impressive because that's something that he has struggled with. He does need to improve his passing. Sekou Dumboya, very impressive. Sekou has been defensively. I think people forget this is where his upside was. Heading into the draft, this is what everyone pinned him as because of his frame, because of his athleticism, because of his strength down low. Defensively, his versatility, all those things, that's what he was supposed to be in terms of his upside. A defensive guy, five blocks in the first game. Okay, Seiku, have a game. I believe he had one block and a steal maybe today. He played well defensively. He's played some small ball five, played some four. He's shown off some really nice defensive. His motor's there. He's just, he looks more engaged. He looks more aware of everything. He looks so much better. Seiku is definitely going to get some minutes this season, and I'm excited to see what he does. Still needs to improve his three-point shooting, similar to Killian. I don't know what they're doing in those French shooting camps. <laughs> I don't know. What am I saying? But I don't know what they're doing in France when it comes to shooting, but they need to fix that because those guys, if they could shoot the ball, oh my God. It would be fantastic because they've both been great defensively. They've both shown some real flashes, but just please shoot. Please shoot a little bit better than looking at Luca Garza. Let's talk about Luca Garza. Tyler Cook's no longer on the roster, so unfortunately we're not going to mention him. Luca Garza, someone I've been impressed with. Yes, his foot speed doesn't look amazing. Does he look great defensively? No, but there's been a few possessions where you see him kind of stuttering the offense and just doing a few things that look decent. He looks okay. 
He doesn't need to be a great defender because offensively, he's got the bag. He can step out for three. He can get to the line. Something I love about big men the most is when they can pump fake from the free throw line and get to the rim because they're either getting free throws or getting an easy layup. Because once a big man gets momentum from the free throw line, a couple of dribbles, big body, straight there. Jokic does it all the time. Joel B does it all the time. Those guys do it all the time. Am I comparing Luka Garza to the two best big men in the league, two of the best big men of all time they're going to go down as? I don't know. Make that make of that what you will. But all I'm saying is he's got that in his bag. He's got a lot in his bag. The one-legged Dirk Nowitzki? The one-legged Dirk Nowitzki? What was that? Okay, Lucas, show us some more of that. Is there anyone else I'm missing? Saban Lee. Some people have kind of been harsh on Saban Lee from what I've seen. I thought he's been okay. He's still just an energy guy coming off the bench. He's not expected to be too much. It's not the ideal situation for him either, playing in a three-guard lineup. I know we talk about Cade and Killian. It's not ideal for them, but it's not ideal for Saban either. It's not ideal for him. He's better off coming off the bench, just giving some energy. He's still not quite there, but he's decent. He's decent. I like Saban Lee. Three-year deal on a really low contract relative to what he could be. I'm happy with that. I'm more than happy with that. In terms of the Pistons' summer league so far, yeah, they've lost the first two games. I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less. There's been a couple of guys that have come in and really tanked those leads. No offense to those guys. I hope they get an NBA contract. I don't like to crap on people who are still trying to fight for an NBA contract. But a couple of those guys have come in. Cade said it himself. He's like, oh yeah, we've had some 10 point leads and then lost them. In other words, Cade is saying, I'm a god. I get us off to a good start. And then these guys who don't have a contract come in and then lose the lead. And then all of a sudden the momentum's gone. There was one period in the game where the Pistons were down by 15 in the third quarter. Cade decided, I'm going to take this on my shoulders for a little bit. Scored like on three consecutive possessions and made a great pass to Luka Garza. Brought it back to seven. And then I think a couple of other guys came on and started selling again. And you get the point. Cade Cunningham is legitimately a star already. I believe that. I believe once he has Kelly Olynyk popping, once he has Jeremy Grant spotting up and cutting... Once he has Sadiq Bey, Isaiah Stewart, Killian Hayes, who am I missing? Frank Jackson, all of these guys, Hamadou Diallo. Once he has all of these pieces around him, he's just going to look better. He's the kind of guy that the more players you put around him that are good, I mean, this speaks for everyone, so I don't even know what I'm about to say. I was going to say he's the kind of guy when there's better players around him, he's going to be better, but no. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's great, great logic. But he's that kind of guy where he does all the little things. There was one where I saw him seal out offensively in a summer league game for a Luka Garza layup or something. He sealed out the defender. Just smart. His leadership, you can hear him talking all the time. He's boxed out like he does things on defense and offense that go so unnoticed, setting screens, moving off the ball, always staying active, always being such a good off-the-ball mover, which you don't see from guys his, with his talent level. He's got the ability to put up 25 and 10 a night. Maybe not 10 assists, but like 25 and 7 a night, particularly in summer league. He could take 25 shots. He could dominate games, but he's just going within the flow of the offense. He's trying to learn what he can do with this team and how he can build with these teammates. And that's what he's doing. But when he does need to take over, he's shown the glimpses of him being able to take over. I've been so impressed with Cade Cunningham, which I should have been and I expected to be, but he's lived up to everything. And if you suggest otherwise, you just haven't been watching the games. You've been looking at the box score. Sorry? Sorry, is that harsh? Well, it's true. It's true. At the end of the day, Cade is a star. We've got Cade, number one pick for a reason. And he's going to prove that this year because he's legitimately that good.